Apes are a clade of old-world primates that inhabit sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia. They can be divided into the great apes, which include the orangutan, gorilla, chimpanzee, bonobo, and humans, and the lesser apes, which include the gibbons. Although monkeys exist in South America, except for humans, no wild apes are living there. Here we ask the question, why are there no apes in South America? The answer to this question seems to be a combination of factors. Mostly, the geographical barriers between where apes originated from and the South American continent, the timing of ape evolution, and possibly the lack of the same evolutionary pressures on primates in South America. Apes are a group of primates that also includes groups such as monkeys, lemurs, and tarsiers, as well as others. The very earliest primates can be traced back to more than 60 million years ago. And whilst humans and other great apes are thought to have evolved in Africa, the original primates were thought to have first emerged elsewhere, likely in Asia. These could be considered proto-primates, but they gave rise to the primates we know today. A tropical population that survived the challenges of time gave rise to all living species. The lemurs of Madagascar, lorises of Southeast Asia, bush babies of Africa, South America's New World monkeys, and the Old World monkeys, including the apes, and indeed, humans. Despite the earliest primates being widespread across the globe, much of the evolution later on in their history occurred in Africa. The apes split from the New World monkeys 40 to 44 million years ago on the African continent. At this time, the Atlantic Ocean was much narrower than it is today. The African and South American continents were much closer together, as they hadn't settled into their current day positions yet. During powerful storms, huge islands of vegetation broke off from mainland Africa and drifted into the open ocean. Back then, the Panama Land Bridge did not exist, as sea levels were higher. Without the bridge, unlike today, the ocean currents favored a westward direction, carrying the vast vegetation islands from Africa towards South America. It is believed that these islands carried some monkeys across the water to South America, and it was these primates that became known as the New World Monkeys. This process didn't happen overnight. There were thought to have been several intermediatory islands along the way, which are now submerged beneath the Atlantic. These provided refuge for the animals as they made their incredible journey. Not only that, but fossil evidence suggests that there were at least two possibly three dispersal events from Africa to South America, each time bringing with them new primates. Many dismiss the floating vegetation theory, as it seems largely implausible. Others suggest that there was a giant land bridge between the two continents that the animals crossed, or that the primates crossed into South America long before the fossil record suggested, and during the time when the two continents were still connected. However, more recently, the idea of migrating on floating vegetation is more widely accepted and is thought far more common than once supposed. Although these events are incredibly rare, given huge periods, such freak events did happen, and they inevitably influenced evolution. But the New World monkeys weren't the only species to make the extraordinary journey. Caviamorpha rodents also crossed over to South America, giving rise to South America's unique capybara, chinchillas koipu, and many others. By the time apes were evolving and spreading throughout Africa, the South American continent had drifted further away, making any transatlantic journey now impossible. So, the geographical barrier of an entire ocean stopped apes from making it to South America whilst their earlier relatives, the New World monkeys, had already made it. Although the African apes didn't make it westwards into South America, they still managed to spread far and wide. Today, orangutans are the only great apes to live outside Africa. They live thousands of miles away in Southeast Asia. But how did they get there? Did they travel across open water on vegetation platforms, much like South America's New World monkeys did? Scientists don't think so. It's more likely that several of their ancestors evolved and migrated across Eurasia, eventually resulting in the orangutans found today in Borneo and Sumatra. To understand where a species originated from, scientists often rely on fossil evidence to fill in the missing gaps. But for orangutans, this evidence is few and far between. The habitat in which they lived, and still live, 
is not conducive to fossil preservation. The acidic soils of the rainforest tend to erode bones rather than preserve them. Therefore, the evolutionary history and paleoecology of orangutans is poorly understood. However, fossilized remains of another great ape, thought to be a direct ancestor of the orangutan, have revealed a wide geographical distribution. This great ape was called Civipithecus and was known to have inhabited India and Pakistan and existed as far west as Greece and as far east as China. It appears that this was the missing link between apes in Africa and those in Southeast Asia. Orangutans evolved from Civipithecus and its ancestors migrated to Asia. Orangutans who made it to the islands of Southeast Asia, where land bridges were once present, became isolated when sea levels rose. Whilst habitat destruction caused their mainland counterparts to become extinct in Asia, their isolation on the islands saved them from the same fate. There is a phenomenon called convergent evolution, whereby completely unrelated species evolved and developed similar characteristics. This is typically to solve a similar problem. Some wonder why primates in South America never evolved into apes, when those in Africa did. But this is a flawed question as it is not scientifically possible for the monkeys that made it across the Atlantic to evolve into something like a chimpanzee. They had already split from the lineage that became great apes in Africa. However, they did go on to evolve into the array of different primates found on the South American continent today. The habitat and climate of South America is different from that of Africa. The primates that arrived on the continent adapted to the tropical rainforests and learned to evade the predators by staying high up in the trees. They weren't subjected to the same kinds of pressures as their relatives in Africa simply due to the difference in location. The great apes of Africa are mostly ground-dwelling, only venturing into the trees to sleep in their nests at night. They are generally large, with the eastern gorilla weighing up to 200 kilograms and 330 pounds. In comparison, the South American primates live amongst the branches, and the largest species is the woolly spider monkey rarely exceeding 11 kilograms or 24 pounds. It seems the monkeys that arrived in South America found their ideal niche. They adapted well to the climate and habitat there. With no ecological pressures to evolve into entirely different primate forms, there was no reason to do so. Evolution typically only occurs when there are benefits to adapting and changing to external pressures such as climate, predator or prey presence, changes in habitat, or disease prevalence. Although the New World monkeys have evolved into a staggering 156 extant species, they all have similar features to one another. Just a few of the different species include the likes of sockies, howlers, spiders, woolly and squirrel monkeys, capuchins, marmosets, and tamarins. They all have the characteristic of a prehensile tail. Some have the ability to hold their entire body weight by their tails whilst foraging in the branches, whilst others use it more as an extra limb for balance in the trees. Unlike the Old World monkeys, most of those in South America do not have opposable thumbs. And unlike most of the apes, except for the orangutan, the New World monkeys are mainly arboreal. They spend most of their lives in the tree canopy. Of all the apes to be able to survive in South America, the gibbon is the most likely. They are found throughout subtropical and tropical rainforests, from eastern Bangladesh to northeast India to southern China and Indonesia, including the islands of Sumatra, Borneo, and Java. They are the fastest of all the tree-dwelling non-flying mammals, swinging through the branches using their flexible ball and socket wrist joints. On the ground, they walk on two legs, having an Achilles tendon most like humans but they would lack the evolutionary history that has made the New World monkeys so well adapted to the South American continent. It is unlikely any great migrations of species will occur in this day and age. Physical barriers largely imposed by humans such as cities, highways, and habitat destruction make such a journey less possible. However, there have been recent recordings of the North American coyote venturing into the very northern tip of South America and the crab-eating fox from South America migrating into Panama and perhaps beyond. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.